Hi, welcome to the Motion Picture Notion. I'm your host, Gabriel Burton. This is my brother, Colton Riggs. And uh, we just watched the 2004 film, The Alamo. Six. 2004. Oh, was it? Yeah. It's got Patrick Wilson, Billy Bob Thornton as uh, friggin' Davy Crockett. It's Can't got, oh yeah, j uh, what's his face from Lost Boys? Why am I drawing a blank? Jason Patrick played Jim Bowie, Billy Thank Bob you. Thornton. Was Davy Crockett, uh, Dennis Quaid was Sam Houston, and Patrick Wilson plays uh, Houston Travis, the uh, commander in chief of the Alamo. Patrick Wilson, who I think is a very underrated actor. I would agree, he's low key, but he's he's a very talented actor. I liked this movie. It did not get good reviews. The Rotten Tomatoes score was a twenty nine percent, which I think is outright brutal, frankly. The audience score, honestly, was 45%, which I was kind of surprised at. I mean, I, I'm not surprised at Rotten Tomatoes, because they're all like... But I could say, that's a fair score, because not for nothing, you look at the polarization. And, it, all right, so again, this is one of those, it's a touchy subject, but this is one of those films where, to a certain degree, you can't acknowledge it without acknowledging some sort of political aspect, because, I mean, shit, it's... It's the battle for the Alamo, but it's basically it's the war between the Republic of Texas and the uh, dictatorship of uh, Santa Ana. But m my whole thing is like, what were people expecting? Because it's a historical piece. And yes, it was glamorized in certain ways, but they acknowledged like a broad range of perspectives like Jim Bowie was a slave owner and not only was he a slave owner but he was royal dickhead to his slave uh, I mean well I mean in he, that in that he let him go so that he didn't have to die at the Alamo but he was basically like yeah I'm not freeing you or anything like I'm gonna come find you when all this is done so and there was the perspective of the slaves who were digging a well for these people and griping about it and then when they get attacked the first time the slaves hide in the well which is i mean i think kind of funny no, actually, it, was, like, it, it was it's kind of funny and it's one of those things too there's this relationship between the two slaves houston travis's slave which i believe by technicality it was it wasn't an indentured slave or but or indentured servant but it was basically he was a slave and it was one of those things where one of the things they discussed like papers or not like you do this for them you do that well you know it's like you cook the meals you you know clean their clothes you know and the younger slave initially is like mr houston he won't give me a gun and the older slave who is jim Bowie's slave who has very much been treated like a slave and his whole thing is like you know you clean the clothes you make the food you shovel the shit like damn if you're gonna die for them boy and he's right like you know but like that acknowledgement in and of itself was good but the the, the thing is and, the, and and this is the bottom line this this movie I, I think that part of the reason why it was panned was because it was really the tail end of when it was okay to or you know to be like patriotic about american history because if you ask anybody today it's like oh the alamo was mexican territory and a bunch of white people stole it and shit like that and that's not really true at all historically actually it was given uh texas was its own republic separate from the united states and it was it actually consisted of mexicans and former United States people who were supposed to have formed their own community. And Santa Ana was a freaking dick. Like, a well, royal, murdering, well, asshole. Histori <laughs> well, histor like, historically speaking, basically what it really boils down to is when the Republic of Texas first came about, it was the Mexicans and the Americans who basically were, were disillusioned by their own governments yeah and they, they wanted to start the their own done. thing and mexico gave that land to be kind of like a liaison between mexico and the united states everything that happened there is so much more nuanced than like a lot of people or a lot of younger people particularly like are taught today it's it's, and it's, it's not like clean cut carbon copy kind of shit is just the best way to say yeah it. like nothing's really black and white and it's literally you've got the mexicans saying oh well, you know the americans and then you've got the americans saying north mexico and even like you know uh, like davy crockett who i think was 
the probably the, the most likable character in the movie. I mean, he's my favorite character. But even him, he's America's got his shady his <laughs> shady past of yeah. killing Native Americans and stuff like that. Like the movie is. Unforgiving. It uh, glamorizes I, things, but it doesn't really sugarcoat them. And you know that's the I mean? thing. Like it, a, it's Hollywood. It's a movie. Yeah. But the fact of the matter is, I've seen the John Wayne, Davy Crockett. I've seen the Fess Parker, David Crockett, which I grew up with. That my a kid I lived next door to uh, it was that three part Disney short series that they like combined yeah. together. Yeah. They uh, they combined together to actually make the movie, and I like. Uh, like when I was a kid, I was like, well, I was like, oh shit, the end of the Fest Parker one. Because again, it's like he does like these, it was like three half hour things, and they combined it together to make a movie. The way it ends is, I'll never forget it. It's the end of that movie, it's fucking Fest Parker, and he's a big dude. He's got his musket, and he's just fucking, bah, bah, at the edge, at the Wally Alamo, just cold cocking people. And again, like there's that beloved kind of stereotypical Americana in my thing, but the thing that I like about this is it's kind of one of those things where it is a low-key film. It builds slowly. That's actually one thing a lot of people complained about. They which, thought it was boring. Which, which I personally didn't. But again, because the characters are so rich. They're well-written, they're well-acted. And the end of the movie's like nothing but action. So oh, Yeah, no, that last, like, shit, what, 30 minutes between the Battle of the Alamo and the Battle of San Jacinto, it's just a straight-up meat grinder. And again, the thing that I like is the... Mexican Texians, as they, you know, we call them Texans now, but they refer to them as Texians. Um, Tex-Mex. Tex-Mex. They wanted to fight, and it was the, you know, the, oh, no, 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 you can't do that, because we got a bunch of pissed-off white people with guns, and they're just looking to, like, yeet every Mexican they can find. And the fact of the matter is, it was one of those things where, the, basically, the Mexicans were like, hey... We held back when you said we were going to hold back. But you know what? This was our fight, too. And you know what it was? It wasn't about Americans. It wasn't about Mexicans. It was the Republic of Texas. It's the goddamn Lone Star State, for Christ's sake. And there's a reason it's the Lone but Star But the idea State. that... It, the bottom line is the idea that it was stolen from Mexico. It's bullshit. It, it's just sort of like one of those things where, you know, I would say that it's important for people to know their full history i think there's that ages old saying those who do not know history are doomed to repeat it and i mean yeah a movie like this would never be made today ever fortunately i think that the rotten tomatoes score and the fact that it was in and out of theater signifies that not enough people have seen it that it'll be kind of like one of those last things that cancel culture is gonna freaking get rid of if they do at all because yeah. it kind of slipped under the radar if anybody hasn't seen it, maybe you should get a different perspective on the whole thing. It's one of those things, if you like it, you like it. If you don't, you don't. Mm. I mean, at the end of the day, it's a movie. I mean, it's about mm. a historical event. Mm. But you know what? If nothing else, I would just encourage you to go out and see it. And honestly, I encourage you to watch the other variants of the Alamo. John Wayne, Fess Parker. Pee Wee Herman. Pee Wee Herman. Mm. All right, we have an emergency guest. Mm. Oh. Wait, wait. You're ruining the interview. It's okay. As far as founding fathers go and whatnot, you know, Benjamin Franklin believed that every man should have the closest thing to a library that he could within his own home. You know, it's like... You know who didn't? Hitler. Just saying. That, that may be true. I don't know. He painted. I know that. Um, he also burned books. He did. But... Um, that was cancel culture back then well too soon and you should watch the movie yes and that's all she wrote <laughs>